Hey, what's up guys? So I've been continuing to dabble with Flutter a bit more and recently I just finished making another game uh, which is Tetris and so I thought I'd share real quick on how to make that because I thought it's quite easy to make actually uh, especially if you've checked out my last couple of games uh, which was Snakes and Space Invaders uh, it's basically the same idea so if you can make that then this should be pretty easy for you too um, like usual, if you want to check out the full code to this game that I wrote up, you can download it from my website in the description. But what's more important than just copying uh, line by line, especially if you're trying to learn how to code, uh, is to just try to understand the overall idea on how this game is made. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to go over in this video, and that's probably the best thing you can take away from it. So just to start us off, uh, of course the first thing we need to think about when you build an app is the, uh, the user interface, like the elements um, uh, displayed on our screen. So just to go over that real quick, uh, very simple, so we've just got a column, and in that column I've got two things, I've got this grid and I've got a row. And basically in the row I've got four uh, buttons. So I've got play, uh, move left, move right, and uh, rotate. Okay, so the first thing we want is we want um, when the user hits play, we want the game to uh, begin, right? So with the play button here, uh, we're going to wrap it with a gesture uh, detector, uh, which makes it uh, tappable. And so once we tap it, then we want to call this function uh, called start game. Okay, so when we hit play, we want the game to start. Okay, so that's this uh, method that I wrote up here. So once the game begins, uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to choose a Tetris piece. Now in uh, Tetris, there are like six or seven different pieces, and we can represent each piece as a list of integers. Okay, so um, this is the kind of basic idea that I used um, to make the last few games, which is this idea of like an ordinate system. So if you recall from a grid, uh, I have like 10 in each row. And so starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then it just continues on, right? So, um, actually, I think I could probably just show you here. If I just save this. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. So, each square is represented by a different number, right? So, that means we can use that to specify a particular piece. So, for example, this first one, 4, 5, 14, 15 is 4, 5, 14, 15. So, that's the box uh, piece, right? So the next one, like 4, 14, 24, 25, 4, 14, 24, 25, so that's the L looking shape. So, yeah, so just using that idea, we can kind of lay out these different pieces. Okay, and so I'm actually going to get rid of um, this child, which currently displays the index number. Uh, I don't want it to do that. So let's just get rid of all of these um, childs. Okay, and if we save them, we just wanted to we just want it to be black. And instead, what we want is we want the color of the box to change, right? So once we've chosen a piece, um, and we save this, if we hit play, we want the color. To change yeah so 
I also have another list of colors. Okay, so just going through these colors, we can uh, highlight that coordinates, the 4, 5, 4, 14, 15 that we had before. All right? Now, of course, this is not really a game right now because it's just it's not even moving. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get this box to 4. Okay, which um, brings up the basically the main part of uh, this game or this tutorial is which is this timer uh, function okay which is really useful I found so every 300 uh, milliseconds you can change this number but every 300 milliseconds um, you want something to happen right so in this case I want the box to move down every 300 milliseconds okay so I was gonna uncomment this move down method that I've written and if I just come over here and just show you what happens in the move down method, method that I wrote uh, we're going to set the state okay which uh, basically just rebuilds this whole widget and we're gonna go through using a quick for loop go through our chosen piece which is this box uh, which is technically a list of integers and we're going to add 10 to each of those numbers so remember how there are 10 numbers in each row. So with any given box, if you add 10, it'll go to the next um, row down, right? So if you add 10 to each of these four boxes, then the whole thing will just shift down, right? So if we just save this, we want it to uh, add 10 every 300 milliseconds. So hopefully that works here. And yeah, there we go. So it's just starting to fall down now. And yeah, we, do, we don't really have a stopping condition, so it just continued off of our screen. Okay, which then naturally brings us to have some stopping condition, right? We want this to be the bottom of it. So this is where, let's just get rid of this and uncomment this out. So this is where we need to have uh, some hit floor condition. Okay, and basically, um, I'll go through this method in just a second. But basically, if you hit the floor, then you want it to stop, and we want to cancel the timer. Okay, so we want it to stop. Uh, if you haven't hit the floor yet, then just continue moving down. Okay, and you're checking this every 300 seconds. Um, also, note here when we hit floor um, and we cancel the timer, I also start the game again. Um, so it's kind of a it kind of recursively calls itself. So we want this to happen because uh, if I play, once it falls down, oh whoops, let me save this. Once it falls down um, and it hits start game again, it chooses another piece and then it just kind of continues on. So re you you want it to recursively uh, continue on. Right, so yeah, it's going through all the different pieces that I had laid out before. Okay, so now that you know how that works, um, I'm just going to quickly explain how this hit floor uh, method uh, works. So this one is going to be a boolean value, meaning that it's just going to return a uh, true or false. So with this one, it's actually quite easy to implement. So this method, like I said, is going to be a boolean. And basically what we're going to do is uh, let's set it to be false first and take a look at our chosen piece which is the one that's falling down and we're just going to sort it just to make sure that it's in ascending order and if we check the last uh, box of that chosen piece and we add 10 uh, meaning we check the next row and if that number is at least greater or equal to the number of squares that we have in total then we can safely say that we have hit the floor. Okay, so for example, if um, our box has reached this point at the end, then we can just check this last square here. And if we say, okay, well, this square um, add 10, which will bring us to the next row. And if this number is greater than the number of squares, then yeah, we're obviously outside of this box. So at that point, we can return um, hit floor is equal to true and we can make sure that we just stop at this point 
another thing that we need to keep track of is this landed um, list, uh, which just keeps track of all the landed objects. Okay, so when you um, land on the floor, you obviously want to stop, but also when you land on another piece, uh, you also want to stop there as well. Right, so with any of the pieces, and you check the next row, uh, and that piece is contained within our landed object, then we want to also return hit floor is equal to true. Okay, so yeah, so that's just how that uh, Boolean function will work. Okay, and that's just what this is taking care of. The last few things we need to cover are these controls, so these buttons here the left arrow, the right arrow, and also the rotate button. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show you how um, that can be done. So, um, first of all, if I just go back down to the UI, if you go to your arrows, which are just um, these containers here, let's wrap them with a gesture detector. Okay, and on their on tap method, we're going to have move left and also move right. Okay, same thing for the rotate piece, uh, wrap it in a gesture detector, and then we're going to have this rotate piece uh, me uh, method. Alrighty, and so basically if we tap them, if I have a look at move left, so again, I'm just going to quickly explain how this code, uh, what this code is doing. So remember, if you can understand move down, which was with all of the um, boxes in our piece, we're gonna just add 10, right? And this notion of adding 10 um, makes the movement go downwards, right? Similarly, if I subtract one, then we're gonna start moving left, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to go through all of our, um, our integers in our chosen piece, okay? Do a quick for loop and each of those numbers, let's just subtract one. Okay, every time we tap this button. Uh, what all this extra code here is for is basically once we get to the end, it's just detecting once we hit a wall. Uh, we don't want it to continue going. Uh, if you can't, if you don't catch that, then it's just gonna kind of teleport to the other side. So yeah, that's just what all this code is for. Okay, but the basic idea is we just subtract one. Okay, every time we hit the button. Same thing for move right, but we're going to plus one. Okay, that'll make it move to the right. Now, the last button that we need to implement is the rotate button. And for this one, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Uh, like I said, if you want to just check out the code, you can download it from my website. Um, but this one, again, the basic idea is very similar to just moving the pieces around. Uh, like with any particular piece, if you plus 10, you move down once. Plus 20, you move down twice. If you just plus 1, you move right. And so using that kind of movement, you can just have and rearrange uh, the pieces around. And so, yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail for that one. But the last, uh, the last method that we need to implement is, after we can rotate around, the last thing we need to implement is the clear row function. So once we fill out a row like this, with this blue one falling down, we want the last row to clear, right? So yeah, right now it's not doing anything. So that's the last thing I'm going to show you uh, in this video. Okay, so with the clear row, um, again, over here, we want to check that at every frame or every time we rebuild our state. So every 300 milliseconds, we want to check if there's any row to clear, okay? And the basic idea for clearing the row um, is to firstly not get too shocked by what this code uh, looks like, uh, but again, just to just understand the basic idea. So with clear row, just starting from the last row, we're just going to check if there's um, a colored in box or not. Okay, and when we get to the end of the row, if our count is 10, then that means that row is full, right? So if the count is 10, then we want to remove things from that row, okay? And if it's not, then don't do anything. Like if it's 9, then you don't do anything, right? So 
um, just with that idea we can hopefully clear the row now okay and then that should be the last thing okay I've coded it up um, in a way where even if there's multiple rows to clear you should be able to clear uh, the row as well okay so Yeah, if you have any questions, maybe I can wait. Yeah, let's do this one. Let's clear this. And yeah, we want that to clear. Cool. So if you have any questions on this, just leave me a comment on the video down below. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters.